This episode is brought to you by Podcast Assist, offering voiceovers, audio editing and mastering, transcriptions and show notes, episode summaries, and even hosting a podcast on a topic important to you. Visit Facebook.com slash Podcast Assist for more info on their flat $30 per hour rate. Subscribe with iTunes, Audio Boom, Stitcher, or your favorite podcasting app. And if you enjoy what you hear, like us on Facebook. Also, consider throwing a little cash our way by visiting patreon.com slash Korea FM. And find more of our great content on our home on the web, koreafm.net. I traveled to Seoul Innovation Park here in the northwest part of the capital to attend the city's first ever vegan festival. And I have to admit, upon arriving, I was immediately surprised by both the large amount of people in attendance and also by the wide selection of food, desserts, and even clothing for sale at booths throughout the festival grounds. While at Vegan Festival Korea, I spoke with multiple vendors and attendees, but first, I checked in with one of the members of the team that organized the event. Hello, my name is Kang So Yang, and one of member of this planning group for Vegan Festival. We are friends and before we work for the animal rights movement before so that's why we are vegan and we have some inside motivation for uh, being vegan and protect other animals and other people that's why we want to share the value that's why we organize this vegan festival at the first time we just want to open the small friendly humble vegan flare market for only our friends. But later, people, especially Westerners who eat only vegan or vegetarian, who live in Seoul, they want some more vegan or vegetarian events. So that's why we make it a little bit more bigger and bigger. But we cannot imagine before like this. But we never imagined this kind of big events. Our friend Yang Yang, she's a vegan fashion designer. Uh, she works in the Seoul Innovation Park. Seoul city government makes for the young people who learn the social business. Young people who learn that kind of business, the Seoul city wants to support them. That's why they open the Seoul city, open this place. So Seoul City gave this place for us for free, but we just want to very variety events for the outside people, not just only vegan vegetarians. So we have the vegan food, soy milk, ice cream, sourdough bread, and very special handmade cookies and another Mexican food and vegan cheese from Greece, something like that. And this October or September, we will open again this kind of vegan festival. This is our plan. I went to Vegan Festival Korea with my girlfriend, and as we walked around trying out different vegan foods, talking with people we met, or even buying some clothes, it began to feel more and more like we had left Seoul and were in a completely different city. My name's Russell. I'm from Indiana. It's definitely very interesting. Like, the vibe is interesting. It's sort of like more of like a hipster (laughs) kind of vibe. Lots of interesting things to see here. Before I came to Korea, I was a vegan for like a year and a half. I was a raw vegan for like eight months. Raw vegan, you only eat raw fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So that was the beginning of veganism for me. I did that for like eight months, and then I transitioned to like incorporating more cooked food and came to Korea... You know, anytime you're in a different culture, I think it's important to uh, try to experience it as much as you can. And part of that is the food. But you still want to abide by your own like moral or ethical values. So it's sort of difficult. I think it's difficult in any country. But in Korea, specifically, meat is like a staple of their diet. And if not meat, then fish. So I'm vegetarian, and I try to be vegan as best as I can. So I was mainly just interested about what would be here. And I think the longer I've been here, the more I've learned about like different opportunities or like different ways that I can bring the lifestyle like I had before to Korea. So like there are websites like iHerb 
which has really good price, like specialty food items. So these are things I've picked up and learned since I've been here. So just another way to learn about what they have to offer here. One thing that became very apparent as I spoke with some of the people selling food, clothing, or other items was this desire to not only meet other vegans in the Seoul area, but to also give them or anyone else in attendance more information about how to maintain the vegan lifestyle while living in the ROK. My name is Marcos. I'm from Mexico, but now I'm living permanently in Korea, and I'm vegan. And not only that, but I'm trying to, to help all my, my friends, foreigners and Koreans who have interest in the vegan diet. There's a great interest in the vegan diet, vegetarian, vegan community, and they want products, they want food, they want information, they want books, they want everything. And uh, we have this all kinds of food because people want to be vegan, but they want to have a smooth transition. So they, they still want to eat chicken, they still want to eat cheese, they still want to eat all the stuff they're used to it, right? They don't want to, uh, to try the vegan diet if it's only salad, for example. So uh, you, can, you can see in this festival a wide array of all these kinds of similar foods to meat, but in the plant-based alternative. And so far, the feedback from the people, uh, it seems good. I mean, they keep coming back, they keep ordering again, they're smiling, they're happy, they say thank you. They seem satisfied. They, they ask information of the ingredients. Uh, so, yeah, the, the response is great. VeggieBox is a, is a brand that we created. And under this brand, we import uh, vegan cheese. Because so far in Korea, there were some alternatives to vegan cheese, but people wanted more alternatives to vegan cheese. So we, we just got together a couple friends. We made this small company, and we imported a high-quality substitute for, for cheese that... Um, most of our friends who are not vegan, they just try it and they can't believe that it tastes exactly the same, the texture, the smell, and they're really happy. Uh, so uh, our, our friends who are vegan, they, they, they couldn't eat uh, cheese products or cheese dishes for a long time. So now they're very happy because they can eat the, the grilled sandwich they were used to or the quesadilla they were used to. So, and the new people who, who, who is not vegan but has some interest in trying it sometimes, they, they can do it. They still can continue to, to eat their food that they are used to, to eat. And uh, it's, it's not a hard transition. It's not hard to, to try. So th this, uh, we import this brand, uh, which is uh, called BioLife. It's a very famous brand worldwide. It's, it's the number one brand for vegan cheese. And it's sold in 55 countries. And it has no preservatives, non-GMO, no artificial colorants, uh, no allergens of any kind. It's made of coconut oil. So it's actually pretty healthy. Here at the stand today, we have um, the quesadillas, which is the, the, the tortilla uh, with some beans, a Mexican kind of beans, and then a lot of cheese. So we just, we just fry it, put it in the microwave until it melts. And, and, and it has that cheesy texture that people want. And also we have uh, the barbecue, right? So this stick with these little chunks of, of veggie meat, which is uh, ma uh, made of soy, and it's very well um, flavored. So it, it really tastes similar to meat. People is very happy when they eat it. They, they, it, it tastes pretty similar to meat, or, or, or maybe not so much, but anyway, they're happy. They, they keep eating, they keep trying, they see no problem with that. So, yeah, they, it seems like they, they're, they're positive to, to trying these meal alternative products. And while some may find keeping a vegan diet here in Korea more difficult than back home, I spoke with one woman who told me she became a vegan after coming to South Korea. My name is Moran and I come from France. I came in Korea as an omnivorous, normal person and I started to change the way I eat about a year ago. First, I just went flexitarian. I just wanted to eat less meat and fish. But I was looking on the internet. I met many, uh, many recipes. And uh, I came across a bunch of information, you know, about uh, veganism and the animal welfare and the environment and everything. And so from that point, I went vegetarian and later on switched to vegan. So I would say I'm pretty much vegan since January. It's definitely more difficult to be a vegan in Korea because uh, I've spent a few weeks in vacation in France. And, well, to be a vegan, it might be a little hard, but to be vegetarian, it's for sure no problem at all because most restaurants do have vegetarian dishes. And it's, it's really easy to ask for a 
you know, vegetarian accommodations, if I can say. But here in Korea, it's very hard because they put animal products in everything, even the broth, if you eat some ramen. And so uh, it's, it's, it's really a problem. Also, the language barrier makes it more difficult for me. And since I got a job here, it has been even harder because food is a big part of social gatherings and bonding with colleagues and stuff. And so I found myself eating vegetarian in those contexts. So I saw many updates about the preparation of the event and I was really excited to come here because actually as I went vegan in Korea and it's very hard to find vegan products here, uh, I've never had the chance to try any vegan cheese or vegan uh, meat substitutes. So I was really excited about that. But when I saw the numbers of people who plan on joining the event, then I was surprised. I think many people who came here today are vegetarians or just curious. For KoreaFM.net, I'm Chance Dorland. This episode is brought to you by Podcast Assist, offering voiceovers, audio editing and mastering, transcriptions and show notes, episode summaries, and even hosting a podcast on a topic important to you. Visit Facebook.com slash Podcast Assist for more info on their flat $30 per hour rate. Talk radio, music, and podcasts from the Korean Peninsula. KoreaFM.net.